As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle, and be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascend mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, and that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Here ends the reading. Message from Pastor Deborah. Do you have more slides on this? Huh? Yeah. On this one, do more slides. Yeah, I'll point to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, gonna just, I'm not going to use this, but I need it for just. Yeah. Lean on? A prop. A prop? A prop. A prop. Okay. How's everybody doing this morning? We're hanging in there, sister. Good as it gets. Good as it gets. Thank the Lord every day. So on the way here this morning, I promised God I was not going to critique any drivers. I wasn't going to yell at them or, or say anything about their driving. Because as a delivering pizzas, I uh, see a lot of different drivers and the way they drive. And I get kind of angry once in a while. And as soon as I got onto Schombeck Road, which is right next to my house, the first words out of my mouth was, are you kid? And I stopped. And I said, I know, Lord, I promised you I wouldn't say anything. So I said, I need a little bit of Jesus. And I turned on Caleb. Mm -hmm. I was good all the way until I got on Gary Avenue and I was just about to cross over Lake Street. And this young couple had turned off of Lake Street onto Gary Avenue and they decided to do 25 and a 45. And I said, God, I know I said I wasn't going to say anything. And before I knew it, I'm thinking, oh, there's a speed limit sign. Maybe if I just point to it. Well, the little red guy over here is like, yeah, just point to it. You're not saying a word. <laughs> and the angel on this side said, it's the same thing, Debbie. Well, before I could even think, I already had the window down and I was going like this. And I know Jesus was going, <sighs> <laughs> kind of like the new covenants that Pastor was talking about last week. God was like, oh my gosh, they're just not getting it. I'm going to come down there myself in the form of Jesus and do this myself. And that's basically why I picked Ephesians this week. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to reread um, the first part, 1 through 6. And it says, if I can read it, I might need my glasses. As a prisoner of for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in to one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, 
who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. <clears throat> now, I don't know if uh, we really need this right now. We need unity. We need love. We need patience. Yeah. But we don't have that. We have conflict, we have hatred, and we have evil all over this country right now. We have conflict between countries. We have conflict in our streets. We have conflict between couples, between gang members. And we even have conflict on our highways now. I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago, or no, a couple months ago, I had that uh, gentleman who was chasing me and got in front of me and stopped and I had a semi almost hit me from behind at full speed and if he didn't have an opportunity to go around me I would have been either killed or hurt really bad. God showed me mercy and kindness that day and he also showed the gentleman that was having a bad day mercy and kindness because he didn't get caught. That was one of the scariest conflicts I had ever faced in my life. And I'm just thankful that God gave me the mercy and kindness that uh, he showed that day. <clears throat> I still have PTSD when I drive down that street. And I'm always looking for a little red Nissan car. It's not going to stop me from going to Walmart because that's where I'm headed. And I go down that street a thousand times a day. Um, in verses seven, one through seven or one through six, it tells us we should always be humble and gentle and patient. When I say humble and gentle, I mean that you should always treat others with love and dignity. And remember that things might not always go your way, just like it didn't go my way that day. But we should always remember to make sure that you are matured enough to bear things in your own way and always stay focused on your goal, help others to reach their goals, and help them to rise along, along with you and hold their patience. Now, I know that you all remember the other couple weeks ago I talked about my grandmother and talked about my father. And my father was a very strict Marine. I got some of my OCD and perfectionism from him. <laughs> yeah. Now I grew up in the Lombard Church of the Nazarene, which used to be on Maple Street in Lombard, yeah. and then they moved to 53 uh, in uh, Lombard here, and North Avenue and 53. And growing up, once we first moved here, we didn't have a church at first until my mom got sick and my grandmother came here, but things had kind of got haywire, where we didn't have God in our lives. So as a child, we found a may, uh, we found like um, different programs in different churches that us kids could get away from the house a little. And so then when my grandma did come and we did start going to church, I could see the difference in my family. I could see the older kids had kind of left the house, but I could see the difference in my father. He was a little less Marine mm -hmm. and a little more Christian going towards you know my parents had become uh, they were went on the board they started to go uh, they were in the choir my mom started the fellowship team at the church uh, they also were uh, uh, my dad started the Boy Scouts in the church so you could see a difference and this is the grace of God the love of God he helps us to move this way if we open our hearts to him, right? I mean, that's, that's the truth there. Um, so there's the grace, the love, the kindness. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today without that. Um, so that, that's the way God works. I wouldn't have never thought that my father would have ever sat in a pew. That's why he left Mississippi to begin with, because his grandma and his mom was so hard on him to be a Christian. So I saw the difference. When I moved out of the house, um, I was, uh, you know, learning. I had gone to college, criminal justice, to be a police officer. 
and I was a police officer at Villa Park. I had gotten hurt in the line of duty off of Roosevelt Road, just uh, west of Ardmore. I had pulled an older lady over, and at that time we didn't have middle lanes. So I was trying to tell the lady to pull over to a safer place, and when I got back into my squad, a drunk driver hit me at 45 miles an hour. So I had to do an early retirement. So that was the first thing in my life that I had lost. So when I started walking, um, it took a long time for me to start walking again. Then I went uh, into nursing school and I started nursing. I worked at a rehab for um, drunk, uh, drug addicts and, and alcoholics. So I knew the 12 steps, I know the surrender prayer, I knew all that. So when I got married, um, my husband had left me. I lost my children. My mother died. Sorry. So I turned to drugs and alcohol. This was me at my bottom. I was probably high on cocaine right there. This was my worst. I had become 250 pounds there. I didn't care about anything or anybody. Because anybody that loved me died or left. So I didn't care. Then I met April's mom. And I decided that I was going to stop on my own. And I did. And then I met this man. Because April's mom said to me one day, you want to go to Bible study? And I said, yeah, why not? So I went to Bible study. Well, first of all, I went to a dinner. I went with Jim Vizinski, my husband Jim, and Jim Kesey. And the first thing they were saying is, please don't let the pastor sit at our table. Please don't let the pastor sit at our table. And sure enough, Pastor Dawson sat at our table. <laughs> and then the very next day, my girlfriend said, you want to go to Bible study? The pastor will pick us up. And guess who the pastor was? Pastor Dawson. Mm -hmm. He picked us up. And I'm like, this is a sign from God. <laughs> so we started Bible study. And you can see me in the corner up there. And the, right there in the real pretty little color next to Pastor is April's mother. And so then I decided I was going to follow Jesus. I was never going to look back. And then today, here we are. I'm a pastor now, and I've never looked back. And this is the grace, the love, the compassion, the patience that God has with us, that he can just turn our lives around. He can still love us for who we are, what we are, and he doesn't care. He still loves us. He loves us every day of our lives, and he'll embrace us no matter what. And I've never looked back at that other person. It's still here. It still hurts that I did that to my body, my tongue. But now I look at that, and I praise God every day for that. And I, I still love this book. I, I read it all the time. And you can refer to anything that you're talking about. It's Martin Luther. Sorry, I'm so crying. I'm so cry, baby. I really can't see. I might need my glasses. <laughs> Thank you. So, it says, under grace, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, verses 1. Between grace and the gift, there is this difference. Grace actually means God's favor or the good will which in himself he bears towards us, by which he is disposed to give us Christ and to pour into us the Holy Spirit with his gifts. The gifts and the Spirit increase in us every day, but they are not yet 
perfect. For us there remains in us the evil desires and sins that war against the Spirit. Nevertheless, grace does so much that we are accounted completely righteous before God. For his grace is not divided or parceled out as are the gifts, but take us completely into favor for the sake of Christ, our intercessors and mediator. And because of this, the gifts are begun in us. God is good. It's grace, love, compassion, mercy, kindness. It's such a gift that I, I just can't believe more people want. Yes. Amen. It's all us, free. <laughs> and it's all free. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the love that you pour out onto us. I thank you every day for the gifts that you have given me, the patience that you have shown to me, and I just love you so much and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Deborah.